Hey everybody, welcome back to another installment of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. Geo here, and today we're going beyond. Yes, we're going to the Hanna-Barbera line of comics that rebooted the franchise, if you will. And today we're taking a look at the Jetsons. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, and uh, yeah, The Jetsons. I've been meaning to review this book for a while, and I saw it on my shelf and thought, you know what, it's, it's time I give it a read, uh, another read, and, and do a proper review on it, because I started doing them for the Hanna-Barbera universe, and I totally forgot to keep going. Uh, I did videos on Scooby Apocalypse, uh, the Flintstones, and of course, Future Quest. I will be covering the rest of the series eventually, but I wanted to take a crack at the Jetsons because I loved this story so much. It is so ridiculously awesome, and the concept, it just works for these characters. Now, I'm a massive Hanna-Barbera fan. I, I grew up watching all of the uh, different cartoons and stuff and the Jetsons of course they're just timeless classic characters that everybody loves and to reimagine them is not an easy task and when somebody comes in and messes with that nostalgia it can be a little bit uh, bothersome I guess for some people. I don't really mind per se because uh, again this is a reimagining on purpose it doesn't interfere with the older material whatsoever this is just an alternate take that you can enjoy and to have this series uh the Hanna-Barbera universe be reimagined by DC Comics uh, with more um with darker uh, tones and stuff it, not necessarily like a dark story but, you know, the subject matter is for adult readers. It's not a story that you can give to a young kid for them to enjoy. This is more for the older fans. So what is this reboot all about? First off, I love this cover so much. It's one of my favorites out of every uh, Hanna-Barbera Beyond comic. I love this from Amanda Connor. This story is written by Jimmy Palmiotti and with art by Pierre Brito and coloring by Alex Sinclair. This story reimagines the Jetsons family a couple, I think it's a couple years after the end of the TV show. And we explore the origins of how these characters are living up in the sky and near the stratosphere, if you will. And we are also examining the family's origin somewhat if you will this book contains six issues as well as the backup feature that was uh, shown on booster gold and the flintstones that was a one shot and it's a small issue but pretty crucial and perfectly encapsulates what is awesome about this reboot so when this story first begins with that one shot we get a pretty massive original reveal uh, for the character of Rosie and I don't want to necessarily spoil it because I want people to find out about this book and be interested in picking it up and to be surprised at the reveal because I thought it was a really clever twist after that we dive into the main story and it involves the origin of the world that the Jetsons are inhabiting because the earth is very different and we finally learn that uh, due to a meteor that hit our planet uh, caused the sea levels to rise the the final uh, polar and ice caps melted and with the impact of the meteor all the water uh, rose exponentially and all the land masses flooded and all that stuff so they only had one option which was to take to the skies and uh, space because they built a couple refugee spaceships if you will for that occasion and I think it was 124 years later is when this book begins in uh, the present timeline of this book where we find out that there is a second asteroid or meteor 
heading towards Earth called Jacob. And the science community is doing everything possible to stop this from happening because it could lead to a final extinction event for the human species because uh, they can't go back to the ocean because it's riddled with radiation because of that meteor it will disintegrate anything that goes in and um, the impact of this new meteor that's coming will disrupt all the levitation ships and buildings that are in the sky that you know these characters are inhabiting so it's a race against the clock to figure out how they're going to do this and in the midst of this we get a really cool examination of this wonderful fantastic family that america and the world grew to love and you have all your usual suspects george jetson elroy uh judy jane astro uh, and Rosie as well, along with all the supporting cast. And it's, in my opinion, a, a really fun way to take a beloved property and spin it around for adults in a different light. I think Palmiotti did a really good job of taking the concept of the Jetsons and he, he infuses new blood into it, but doesn't forget about what made the series what it was and the type of humor and the characters and the relationship between these characters that's very important that's one of the main themes of this book and the relations uh, between the Jetsons themselves and how they deal with this incoming crisis now all of these characters don't know about the meteor at first but as the story progresses obviously the they're gonna find out and you're basically mixing what we know about the Jetsons property with the tropes of a disaster movie you know uh, stuff like Deep Impact or <laughs> freaking Armageddon stuff like that where it's something beyond their control and how do they react but it's done in a really cool way and I, I love the visuals for this the colors are vibrant and they pop uh, one thing that I was not a hundred percent a fan of was the art. I gotta keep it real with you guys. I thought it could have been, it could have been uh, better. Uh, I like Brito's art style because it, you know, it balances the futuristic settings with a more realistic tone. However, when you have something like this with Amanda Connor, one of my favorite uh, comic book artists. I wanted more of this. I, I think the story could have done really well and maybe it would have gotten a little bit more praise or higher sales numbers if it would have, you know, uh, contained this art style from Connor. Sort of that balance where you have a serious dramatic story with the cartoonish visuals I think would have impacted the title a little bit better. Also, the way Palmiotti wrote this book, it sort of crosses the line between a Jetson story and something out of uh, the Fantastic Four. It definitely reads like that. When the characters are examining the ocean floor because of the original meteor, it reminded me of movies like uh, The Abyss and friggin' Event Horizon, stuff like that. So it definitely has that... Uh, mysterious uh, invasion-esque apocalyptic feel uh, I, I really loved it I thought it was really cool uh, the voices for these characters are there and it, yeah it definitely reads like a grown-up uh, hardcore sci-fi continuation of the Jetsons it leaves behind the slapstick comedy and uh, the humor of the series in favor of examining family and relationships and what we're willing to do in the face of ultimate adversity. One of the things I found really interesting in this book is that they rework the characters and their personalities. You still have hints of what they are, what they were, I guess, in the uh, cartoon show, but they're no longer just a simple characters if you know what i mean like uh for example jane is no longer this housewife that enjoys shopping instead she's 
super smart and uh, is in this science committee trying to stop what is going to be a cataclysmic event from happening. Meanwhile, characters like uh, Judy, for example, yes, she's still a teenager and exhibits some of those personalities, but uh, she's more diligent and she is, I assume, wanting to be like a film major or something because she's preparing this movie to show at her class and she's a lot smarter than her original counterpart. Uh, Elroy really surprised me because he, uh, in the original, was super young and a little mild-mannered bratty kid, if you will, with all his inventions and his smarts and all that stuff. But here, he's more uh, in tune with what's happening and I really enjoyed his philosophy and outlook on certain things throughout the book. I thought that was really cool. Astro is just as lovable, in my opinion and probably the character that gets the most exposition and uh, development in surprising ways is Rosie and I don't want to ruin it just in case because I think it is a fantastic hook that you guys will like but she steals the show throughout almost all the comic when it comes to the family interactions and her dialogue and stuff. I thought it was really well done. The visuals, even though they're not technically my favorite, they're still fun. I liked it. it, it everything has a zing to it. And, you know, whether it's uh, watching all the buildings or the... Uh, the robot designs or just the underwater scenes everything has a purpose to it and a cohesiveness I should say to the way this world runs you know because it's very different from our world even though it's on earth it's very different it's in the future and they're up in the sky they're not in an actual landmass but you still have very bright and colorful uh, palettes and I think uh, Sinclair does a really good job of uh, on this. I love how, uh, depending on the scene, you'll get a lot of colored backgrounds to match the, the mood. Specifically here with the tanks and Rosie and stuff, everything's very uh, bluish in color. I gotta admit, uh, it's only six issues and the one shot, but issue five, uh, I was not expecting that twist at all and it definitely choked me up. I, I it, it, as the kids like to say, it hit me with the feels. I was... <laughs> I did not see that coming, and I thought it was fantastic. It easily, one of uh, Palmiotti's best scenes is in that uh, the, the final pages of that fifth issue. I thought it was wonderful, and it really got emotional. I didn't know what was going to happen, because we're nearing the end, but the ending of the book itself, I thought was pretty good. Uh, it does end a little abrupt and not all of the answers that you want get uh, explained but it, it works for what the title is and for these characters so I liked it I thought it was a very fun reimagining of a beloved franchise with fantastic writing and a new sense of urgency makes the title uh, be a little bit elevated in its status it's not as hokey or comedic as you would think I, I like that. I appreciated that. I think that's the whole point of the Hanna-Barbera Beyond line to sort of craft new stories that are unlike anything you've uh, read or seen before, but still retain that hint of, you know, what made the series so good in the first place right? Uh, have you read The Jetsons? Let me know in the comment section down below. And if not, recommend me your favorite futuristic comic. I'm very interested in finding out. Guys, as always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. You can like, comment, subscribe, and be a part of what we can get them here on YouTube. Hit the bell icon so you know when new videos pop up and stay informed. So yeah, I've got to go. I will catch all of you on our next video. Thank you.